welcome. Welcome to my obsession with grocery budgeting. I'm going to give you seven tips on how to close the wallet. Okay, tip number one is having a cornerstone price. Now there are two main reasons to have a cornerstone price and a cornerstone price could be this. I mostly buy or I only buy foods that are a dollar a pound or whatever your number is. But the benefit of having a cornerstone price is one, it helps with lazy thinking. So instead of calculating all the ingredients in a meal and trying to determine if the whole meal averages out into some affordable, unknown, undefined cheap, right? If you if you want cheap meals, you want a meal that's like a dollar or two, you're probably not going to eat more than a pound, a pound or two of food in a meal. So if your foods are a dollar a pound, then your meals are always going to be, meals are always going to be really cheap. The other thing about having a cornerstone price is it kind of anchors your mind into what is affordable, right? What you've deemed affordable, what you've deemed cheap. For example, right before I realized my grocery budget was just a bit much. I was like, I need to close the wallet. I need to get on track. Maybe, just maybe, I will consider um, trying to stick to foods that are a dollar a pound. Right before I closed the wallet, I realized I was buying, you know, you know those Hue chocolate bars? They're like H-U. Okay, they're $5 and you get two ounces. I was paying $40 a pound for chocolate. I was like, what the hell? And $5 a bar, I'm not poor. I can afford a $5 chocolate bar. The issue is that once I figured out a dollar a pound is kind of my little anchor number, my cornerstone, $40 a pound just seems expensive. Even though $5 a bar isn't expensive and I can afford it, I don't want to pay $40 a pound without really thinking about it. Tip number two, Grocery pickup. I'm not gonna say a lot about grocery pickup. I feel like everybody and their mom knows about grocery pickup, but I'm just gonna say a couple things. If you have a budget, let's say your budget is $75, right? And you put everything on the app, right? You're on the Walmart app, you're on the Aldi app, you're filling your cart, your virtual cart, and you go to check out and you see that the total says $100, you gotta move some shit. I mean, it's that simple. It, it, I don't know how you check out at a regular grocery store in real life, right? Fill, fill up your car, roll to the front, hope that uh, a little Hail Mary, maybe I'll stay within budget or whatever. You know all the benefits of grocery pickup. <clears throat> Someone's filling the shit in your car. You don't have to walk around the grocery store. They don't have to take time out of your hard day. So out of the endless benefits of grocery pickup, not having to go to the grocery store, not having to stand in line, not having to compare prices like all throughout the aisle, it's just easier to, it's just easier to throw everything in the app and just don't check out. If the price is too high, don't check out. That, there you go. You're sticking to your budget. You're welcome. Tip number two, tip, tip number two, tip number two, tip number two, tip number two change your preferences i don't know if this one is obvious or dumb but and i'm not saying change all your preferences and i'm not saying change them all fast i'm not saying any of that i'm just saying if you prefer cheaper foods magic right your budget will just be in a better place as a result just you can change your preferences let me tell you a story in the 90s when people thought differently about food and they really did my dad started eating healthy and i remember at the time feeling like who wants to eat wholesome who wants to eat good i don't know and it just felt it felt so extreme but then years later my values changed which eventually my behavior changed and then i started eating healthy i went from one end of the spectrum to the other you you can change want to hear what i'm barely working on okay for example a packet of Great value oatmeal, already sweetened, already flavored, right? Jazzed up with all the, all the good stuff. It's 16 cents a serving, 16 cents for a packet. Guess who doesn't really, I don't know. I'm not a huge oatmeal person. I don't really find it filling. I really, I don't really work on it very much. So it's silly kind of saying like, 
it never leaves my mind. 16 cents a serving. Man, if that was my fucking... If I made best friends with like a little pack of oatmeal, that could change my life. Do I have any tips on what your preferences should be? No, that sounds stupid. Find your own preferences, figure it out, but just be open, open to change. Another thing I wanted to say about changing your preferences is that it's frustrating when I don't wanna change anything, but yet I want a different result. You can find cheaper preferences. They don't have to be all your preferences. You don't only have to have the poorest man's taste, but it's just to say, change your preferences. Tip number four, do not have a plan, have a system. There are four types of days. There are ideal days where you have all the time and all the energy, woo! There are busy days where you have no time and all the energy. There are lazy days where you have no energy, but you have a lot of time. And then there are days that are hell in a handbasket days, right? You have no time, no energy, you've got nothing to give. You got nothing, okay? Having a plan is like saying every day is ideal. Every day I shall churn butter in the field for eight hours to save 50 cents. But by having a system, you can get ahead. You can troubleshoot. So every day is not the same. Planning for an ideal day. Hang on a second, let me cut in. Who am I cutting in front of? I'm the only one talking, I'm talking to me. I'm cutting in front of that train of thought. And this is really the heart of this recipe series is that I don't make recipes for ideal days. None of my recipes, I don't think I have ideal days. That's just not my life. I never have a day where I have all the time and all the energy. It's just not my life. So in this video series, I have four recipe videos. One video is $1 meals in under 10 minutes, okay? Another video is $2 meals in the crock pot. And the third video is $3 or less meals. And these are meals that are really for days where you have nothing to give. There's no chopping, no boiling. You don't need your cutting board. That video where it's the absolute laziest recipes, just it absolutely changed my life. These are definitely the recipes I really need. So don't have a plan, have a system. Tip number five. Tip number five is supportive of having a system. Tip number five is shelf-stable foods. Shelf-stable foods, whether it's in the freezer or the pantry, they are hella cheap, right? Pasta, rice, frozen veggies. Most of these things are actually a dollar a pound or less if you get like the cheapest brand possible. And shelf-stable foods are perfect when you're on a budget because you can mix and match ingredients, make a random last minute meal and if for whatever reason you don't wanna make a meal, for example, I don't wanna make a meal. And I always do this. I think I wanna make a meal. I wanna cook something. I need a delicious dish. And then the time comes and I just do not follow through. I do this all the time. I'll have a giant watermelon in my fridge. It's like $6.99. It has, I don't know, six servings or something. And my servings are, 800 gram servings, they're like almost two pounds. So I'm sitting there eating all this watermelon all week instead of making a meal. But having shelf stable foods, I just float my groceries. So every week I just like rebuy the watermelon and all my groceries last. So if you have a plan to, unless you're Mary Poppins and you need to like make an eight course meal for like 10 people three times a day, every day, like have some shelf stable foods. So that way you can float your groceries when you kind of end up snacking on some shit instead of making a meal. Is this obvious? This might be obvious. I feel like that, is that obvious? Tip number six, when you first get started, you really don't need like 30 recipes like in your mind, right? To feel confident, to feel good, to feel like you're on track. You really need like five recipes to, just to start. Five solid recipes that kind of revolve around these $1 uh, a pound foods and and you should feel good. You should feel good about that. Put those five recipes in your back pocket and rotate them and just slowly add in more and just feel like you're on track even when you feel like you're starting with so, with so little. This is something I just started doing. So I always pin a bunch of budget recipes and I never really come back to them. In addition to pretending to use Pinterest, 
I do this thing now where every time I make a meal that kind of checks all the boxes, I'm like, this is cheap, this tastes fine, uh, this is like minimal cleanup, it's like really uh, lazy to prepare, this is just checking all the boxes. What I do is I take a picture with my phone and I put it in an album on my phone called Cook This Again. And there's something, um, there's something more practical about seeing pictures on my phone of food that I made in my kitchen in a bowl that I own that just ignites some muscle memory and that makes my brain go like chop chop let's get in the kitchen. Tip number seven. This is the final tip. What do I have to say? I've said so much already. Tip number seven is compliance. All the tips in the world, all the go to this grocery store, buy this item, blah blah blah. All the good ideas do not matter if you are not complying, obviously. You have to look objectively at how you're doing. You don't have to give 100%, but you can just look and see, I'm doing good enough. And if you are doing good enough, you have to pat yourself on the back, for real. However, if you're not really doing a good enough job to pat yourself on the back, then you have to get ahead of the, of, of the problems. And instead of thinking, I'm lazy, or I'm failing, or I'm not good at this, it's better to judge the circumstance than your character. For example, a friend of mine, she travels for work, it's random, so she can't predict when she's going out of town, but it's frequent enough that this issue has come up for her more than once. She knows she's going out of town, so she doesn't want to stock up on groceries. She ends up ordering out and doing and spending too much money on like DoorDash or whatever. So she realized, damn dude, I'm spending all this money. I need to figure this out. Sometimes the solutions aren't obviously logical. A lot of times the problems are psychological or emotional. They're not necessarily rational. So don't just, so, so look at all facets of this scenario. I realized a a big reason why I wasn't complying for so long was that I pretty much was only planning for ideal days. And given that there are zero ideal days in my life, I have z there are no days where I have all the energy and all the time. I have no day like that in my life. It's like, no wonder I wasn't complying. No wonder um, I just couldn't get ahead. It made a big difference. Those were my tips. I wanna say one more thing, obviously, Thank you very much for listening to me ramble. I really encourage everyone to watch the recipe series because these were just my thoughts and feelings. The real tactical and practical part of the series will be the recipes. And a lot of the recipes can be modified to be even cheaper if you were really inspired, but they're pretty damn cheap. They're big ass portions. You will see none of that split a box of pasta between you and your 10 best friends. The comments are turned on. If you're obsessed with budgets, like me, is this something you've kind of come back to? You hadn't really, most people don't master stuff the first time. I'm really curious, what I wanna know is what's worked for you, but more importantly, or as important, what hasn't worked for you? What are some things you've tried that you're like, this should work and you keep trying it and it just doesn't come together? What are some things that you've done along your grocery budgeting journey um, that, that, that have, have and have not worked. I'm very curious. Bye. 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 All right. Goodbye.